Are you new to Excel? Let me give you a brief introduction to some of the basics. Let's go. When you open Excel, you are opening a workbook. A workbook can contain multiple worksheets. Each worksheet is going to look exactly the same. So I can see right down here in the lower left hand corner I have sheet 1. That's what I get by default. Let's just take a look at what we have when we open Excel. So we have the ribbon, I have my tabs across the top, then I have my groups, and I have commands within my groups. Now I have my, my row headings, my column headings. And then these are the individual cells that I can click in. This long white bar here, you can see when my tooltip pops up, this is my formula bar. This is my name box right here. Down here in the lower right hand corner, I have my zoom, normal view, page layout view, and page break view. These icons are actually the same as what you're going to get in view. So the same right there. Well, let's talk about maneuvering within Excel. So you can see this cell right here is my active cell because I can see it looks like there's a border around it. So whatever cell that I click on, that is my active cell. I can also hit enter and that takes me to the next cell underneath. Or if I click tab, then it takes me to the right. So you always want to make sure of where your active cell is because when you start typing in information, that's where it's going to go. I'm just going to come up here to cell A1 and let's say I'm going to type in Paradise Lakes Resort. Now notice my grid lines here where my columns are that this text is overlapping the column and that's okay text can do that. We will find out a little bit later that numbers cannot overlap a column and you will see what I'm talking about once we start entering some numbers that do. But that's okay we're gonna leave it like this for now but I do want to show you something when I click in cell A1 that's actually where I typed in my information. So look here in my formula bar you can see that information in the formula bar. This happens a lot of times so don't make this mistake where Paradise Lakes Resort looks like, and I know Paradise is misspelled, it looks like it's oh, that it's taking up column A and B. But that is not the case because look when I click in cell B1, if I look at my formula bar, it's empty. So there is nothing there. So really what I want to do is I want to resize this column so it's wide enough to fit the text that I have in there. There's a couple of ways that I can do this. If I place my cursor between the A and the B, that line right there, I get a two-sided arrow. It's my resizing handle. I can click, hold, and drag, and now I can make that column wide enough. And I'm just going to undo that real quick. Here's a second method. Again, place the cursor right between that A and the B, two-sided arrow, double-click. What that's called is auto-fit. So it automatically widens the column to the largest set of characters. Okay, so I've typed in this text. What if I want to modify it? I just want to call this Lakes Resort. I could just retype, and I do see people do this. They just start typing in Lakes Resort or whatever it is, the new text that they want. Let me hit undo. A couple things I can do. I can come up here to the formula bar click in the formula bar and I can make changes from here. Or I can simply double click directly into the cell and make changes from there. So it's Lakes Resort and now I'm going to double click again to auto fit that. Okay let's enter some numbers and do a little bit of number formatting. I'm going to enter one, two, three, four, numbers here but I'm going to format these very differently. I'm just going to widen this column so you can see what I'm doing here. So the first set of numbers in C1 I'm going to select that and on my home tab in the number grouping if you look at these three icons right here I have the accounting number format, the percent style, and the comma style. So let's look at what happens when I use these three. So the first one I'm going to select the accounting number format 
And what that does is it gives me two decimal places, a comma, and then a dollar sign. I'm just going to jump down here to my decimal, and I'm going to apply the percent. So that just changes my decimal to a percent. And I'm going to come back up here to C2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to select the comma style. This gives me two decimal places and a comma. Okay, so we're starting to kind of see what's coming together here. But there is another number format that I want to show you that's not right here. It's under this drop down arrow right here, and it's called the currency. So I'm going to select that. Notice I get a dollar sign, the comma, and two decimal places. Probably very obvious what is different between the accounting style and the currency style. That is the placement of the dollar sign. So the, in the accounting style, Excel looks at this dollar sign as text, because text is always a line to the left. In the currency style, Excel thinks of the dollar sign as a number, and numbers are always aligned to the right. Okay, so you kind of get the idea of some basic number formatting here. All right, one more thing that I want to cover in this video is one thing when you're new to Excel, and that is selecting a cell, selecting a range of cells, selecting a column, or selecting a row. So let's talk about that. If I want to select a range of cells, and let's say I want to select this range here, C1 through C4, that is a range of cells, what I do is I hover my mouse over the first cell. I haven't clicked anything yet. See the big fat plus sign? Click hold and drag down. I've selected a range of cells. The same thing if I had a range that went from C1 over to E10. Again, I'm going to hover the mouse over the first cell that I'm going to start in. Do not go into the column heading area, but right in the cell. Click hold drag down and over. So here I've selected a range of cells. To select one individual cell, you are just selecting in that cell. If I want to select an entire column, then that's when you click in the column heading area. And you might do this if you want, if you have an entire, let's look at date formats really quick. I'm going to throw in today's date, and today is 10-4, and here is this horrible date format. I don't like this date format, so I'm going to click the drop down arrow for my number grouping, and I'm just going to choose short date. That's pretty cool. But what if in the future I decide I want to change that date format? I could select the range, but I could also, because this entire column is just dates, I can select the entire column and then I can go in and change the date format. Oh, I think I'll choose this long date that includes the day. Oh, and look at this. What does this mean? Any time that you get these pound signs, it's simply an error message that tells you this column is not wide enough to display a number. How do we widen a column? Well, I can simply double click to auto fit. So here in my column heading area, double click. Look at that. It winds the column. Now I can display a number because technically in Excel, a date is a number. That's how Excel looks at it. We see a date. Excel sees a number. So if I want to select that entire column, again, click in the column heading area. If I want to select an entire row, I click in the row heading area. Click to select a single cell. Click, hold, and drag to select a range of cells or click in the heading area to select entire column or the row heading to select an entire row. Hi, I'm Mickey. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel. And I think you're going to like this next video coming up. Remember, we never stop learning. I'll see you in the next video.